Hello there and welcome to World News Program, streaming to you live on All24 News. I'm your host, Kieran Fitzzachary, and up next are the top stories. In just 24 hours, 40 Palestinians were killed in four Zionist massacres. Gaza neighborhoods were shelled, health facilities targeted, and the invasion extended southward. Families brave bombings to return to shattered shelters in Jabalia. Nearly 4,000 Gaza children are at risk of starvation due to food shortages. And UNICEF warns of grave impact for children on because of the Zionist aggression. Also coming up, Polisario insists on self-determination referendum as the sole solution for Western Sahara, urging the UN Security Council to intervene to revive peace process. Also ahead, Algeria introduces mobile payment service. The Italian firm plans one billion US dollars investment in agriculture, and Qatari groups are building major tourist resorts in Algeria. Stay tuned. The details are right after the break. Again and welcome to World News Program. In today's top stories, in the last 24 hours, Zionist forces carried out four massacres in Gaza, leaving 40 Palestinians dead and 150 injured. The ongoing aggression has now claimed 36,479 lives and wounded 82,777 since October 7th, according to Gaza's health ministry. And on Monday, Zionist artillery strikes in Gaza City claimed the lives of dozens of Palestinians. Ambulance teams recovered four bodies from houses hit in the Zaytun neighborhood, while four more were killed in Sabra. Among the casualties were women and children. The violence also targeted a school sheltering displaced people. The previous night, airstrikes in Boraj and Nusayrat killed 10, including women and children. Rescue efforts are still underway to retrieve bodies from under the rubble. Zionist warplanes struck near Gaza European Hospital in Khan Yunis, resulting in 10 deaths, including three children. Two houses in the city's east were bombed, causing more casualties and injuries among Palestinians in the southern Gaza Strip. Zionist warplanes bombed a house in Rafah, Saudi neighborhood, killing two Palestinians and injuring others. Additionally, occupation gunboats fired heavily on Rafah's beach, with artillery shelling and bombs hitting the Brazil neighborhood and raids on the Uraiba area. On Monday, occupation vehicles entered Khan Yunis and Shuja'iya with intense gunfire and shelling. They also advanced toward Absan, Al Jadida, and Azana, causing displacement and heavy shelling in Gaza City. There was a limited incursion in Shujaia, accompanied by artillery and drone fire. Displaced families, despite Jabalia's devastation, return and seek refuge in damaged UNRWA schools, resisting Zionist displacement plans for Gaza. More on the story with Osam Ayadina. Displaced Palestinians returning to Jabalia in the northern Gaza Strip began to clear the trail of destruction left behind by the withdrawal of Zionist troops. Jabalia was pounded to rubble as a consequence of the Zionist assault lasting roughly 20 days, 
just one part of the broader series of attacks across the Gaza Strip, which triggered residents to leave their homes for more than nine months. As you can see, the situation is not suitable to live in. We don't use anything that is meant for human use. Nothing. Not a pot or a water bottle. There is no cleanness or water. No one is looking at us. We came here and it is only a shelter. It is just walls that are giving us shelter. We have set up these shades. It is not walls. Former residents of the city returned to their homes, only to find corpses buried beneath piles of rubble and devastated infrastructure. The city transformed into an abject nothingness with the latest destructions. The destruction is massive. It is something that the brain cannot imagine. Where are the Arab countries? Where are the Muslim nations? No one is looking. We don't know what to do. We only have God. May God look at us with mercy. We don't want anything else. Residents have taken the initiative to start the process by clearing rubble from the floors of their shattered homes. Efforts are underway to render the area habitable again, with both municipal workers and civilians joining forces to tackle the immense task ahead. We left because of the shooting. They were firing at us. The snipers were on us. The tanks came to us while we were at school. We came back to the place and we found that it has fallen. We didn't find anything. On Friday, the Zionist military declared the end of its offensive in the Jabalia area. After 20 days, more than 120 bodies of Palestinians were recovered from the rubble, two days after the forces left the Jabalia camp. Gaza's authorities issued a warning. Over 3,500 children are five or under five face imminent death due to food shortages and aid blockages. Urgent international intervention is pleaded for to prevent this tragedy, as severe malnutrition puts their lives at risk. More than 3,500 children under the age of five are at risk of gradual death in the Gaza Strip due to the Israeli occupation policies that involve starving children, a lack of milk and food, the absence of nutritional supplements, denial of vaccinations, and the blocking of humanitarian aid for the fourth consecutive week amidst terrible international silence. And as Zionist aggression persists in Rafah, the threat of widespread famine grows, particularly affecting children facing severe malnutrition. The UNICEF in Palestine labels the situation catastrophic. Here's Salman Asibna. With the continuation of the Zionist aggression on Rafah, the cycle of comprehensive famine is expanding, especially among children who suffer from severe malnutrition. At the same time, the United Nations Children's Fund in Palestine described the situation as catastrophic with the spread of diseases and the far too little aid reaching people in need. Yusuf needs treatment and milk, but there is none in Gaza. We even try to get milk from pharmacies, but this is not available either and has to come from the West Bank. So I give him wheat. He even suffers from bloating, and the doctor asked me to do a wheat allergy test to find the cause, but the test is not available at the hospital, so we will do it outside. A disastrous situation, stocks and external aid are reduced or destroyed. This infant Saif, who could barely breathe in the absence of infant milk, his small body could not tolerate wheat, which caused him discomfort and bloating. <laughs> There is no milk available in the markets. We depend on aid to give milk to our children, which greatly affects their health. My son suffers all night. He suffers from colic so much that we had to postpone the surgery. He was supposed to undergo with the risk of complications that would be life-threatening. The closure of the crossings by the Israeli occupation has led to many diseases in the Gaza Strip. Indeed, the occupation has prevented the entry of food, especially milk, for children, which has led to serious weaknesses in the body, very poor growth and infection with many diseases. We therefore advocate for the availability of large quantities of milk from private sources, allowing mothers to feed their children with the appropriate nutrition necessary for their health. 
Using Hanga as a weapon of war, this is one of the barbaric Zionist policies in the Gaza Strip. If nutrition supplies, especially ready-to-use therapeutic foods used to treat malnutrition among children, are not distributed, treatment for more than 3,000 severely malnourished children will be stopped. British activists staged a protest at a multinational aerospace engineering systems company in Blackburn, England, condemning the UK's weapon supply to the entity. They blocked the entrance to the company, known for military aerospace industries, demanding an immediate halt to weapon supply, denouncing it as complicity in, in Gaza's ongoing conflict, chants echoed for Palestinian rights to resist and revolt. To other topical news now, Sidi Mohamed Ammar Polisarius, UN representative, insists that self-determination referendum is the only solution to the Sahrawi cause. He urges Security Council action to enable Minorso's full mandate and warns of dire consequences or consequences for peace if no action is taken. Sidi Mohamed Ammar accuses the Security Council of creating the stalemate by failing to ensure Morocco's compliance. The basis of the solution lies in the exercise by the Sahrawi people of their inalienable right to self-determination and independence. The solution only concerns the Sahrawi people as holders of the right to self-determination. The means of application consists of consulting the Sahrawi people through a free and fair referendum. Since 2021, over 80 people died in drone attacks by the Moroccan occupation on liberated areas in Western Sahara. The French newspaper La Croix reported drones targeting Bedouin camps, killing 86 and destroying 49 vehicles. The drones, made by a Zionist company, were deployed as part of normalization between Morocco and the said entity, according to the newspaper. Popular protests resurge in Morocco amid a multi-dimensional crisis. The government's move to end subsidies on cooking gas cylinders triggers widespread discontent among citizens, adding to their burden. My brothers, this government's slogan is procrastination, forgery, and deepening impoverishment. Why this slogan? Today we know that the government has sidelined public debate on social affairs, marginalized the opposition, marginalized serious unions, and closed public media to any discussion. Moroccan activists protested outside the Casablanca Court of Appeal in solidarity with Abdurrahman Zenkad, a prisoner sentenced to five years for a tweet opposing normalization and supporting Gaza. They called for his release, denouncing the ruling as unjust and an attack on freedom of expression. Algerian Army General Saeed Chengriha, the Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, emphasized the necessity of unified efforts from all national stakeholders to confront hostile agendas and address develop, developmental challenges. He made these remarks while uh, inaugurating a national forum titled National Defense in the Face of the War of Mines in Algiers. Shangriha highlighted the forum's significance against the backdrop of evolving international and regional geopolitics marked by complex crises and emerging threats. <laughs> The organization of this national forum titled National Defense comes in the context of an international and regional geopolitical landscape characterized by transformation, complex crises, and emerging threats. 
These dynamics make it extremely challenging to anticipate future developments, especially amid intensified competition between current and emerging powers to assert their influence and tighten their grip on the resources and wealth of southern countries, completely disregarding the potentially dire consequences on international and regional security without adequately considering the negative repercussions. Therefore, it is the legitimate right of developing nations to enjoy security, peace, and dignified living conditions. To some diplomatic activities now, Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Ataf met with South Korean President Yoon Song Yul in Seoul on Monday. Ataf conveyed greetings from Algerian President Abdul Majid Tibun and his best wishes for the success of the African Korean summit. In the same context, Foreign Minister Ahmed Ataf held bilateral meetings with African counterparts in Seoul before the African Korean summit. Discussions focused on enhancing bilateral relations, regional developments, and preparations for African Union events. And in Algeria, the country unveiled a mobile phone instant payment service converter on Monday, allowing QR code based transactions and money transfers. Finance Minister Laziz Fayed highlighted its potential to revolutionize finance and banking, offering citizens fast, user friendly, and secure digital services. <laughs> Today is the right time to pass to another step through providing a payment and transfer services converter. And this is via linking all applications of banks and the Algerian post system to the smartphone. And the Switch Mobile will create a genuine digital wealth in the fields of finance and banks through providing rapid digital services and easy for use and secure for citizens so as to keep the goal of achieving the principle of financial inclusion. Algerian Minister of Finance disclosed that Algeria possesses over 17 million bank cards with recorded electronic payment transactions. In the language of numbers, we can count the number of bank cards and the cards of the Algerian Post, which has risen to more than 17 million cards valid until March 31, 2024, in addition to the rise in the number of ADM machines to more than 3,368 and the registration of more than 45 billion and 906 million and 10,000 operations with a sum of money surpassing 859 billion Algerian dinars until the same date. Still with economy-related news, three small and medium-sized enterprises plan to join Algerian Stock Exchange following the successful listing of Algerian popular credit earlier this year. They await the listing of local development bank and a telecommunications company in the current year. During this year, the Algiers Stock Exchange is also scheduled to witness the listing of the local development bank and will soon witness a diversification of listed companies through the inclusion of companies from the telecommunications sector, which will inevitably increase the dynamism and mobility in trading and contribute to improving the attractiveness of the Algiers Stock Exchange to investors of all kinds. Italian company BF intends to invest over 1 billion US dollars in an agricultural project in southern Algeria. The Algerian Agency for Investment Promotion has received international investment requests exceeding 8 billion US dollars. In the agricultural sector, there is a major project nearing a billion dollars with an Italian partner, BF. This company is also investing in Tugurt, owning about 20,000 hectares and planning to invest in Timimun as well, with 37,000 hectares in agriculture sector, especially in grains. They are in negotiations with us regarding granting privileges and also with the Ministry of Agriculture regarding strategic activity orientations. We requested alignment with the Ministry of Agriculture so that their activities are not limited to grain farming but also extend to export-oriented processing industries, among other conditions. This Italian company is significant and well-known in these investments. Mr. Omar Akash, the Director General of the Algerian Agency for Investment Promotion, disclosed ongoing negotiations with Qatari partners to develop tourism projects in Algeria to international standards. There are other Qatari investors, particularly in the tourism sector, who are in negotiations to develop a tourist complex 
who are in negotiations to develop a tourist resort. The negotiations are still ongoing, so I can't provide more details at this time. However, the primary goal of investing here is in its initial stages. And speaking of tourism, Algeria has seen a surge in foreign tourists, prompting plans to expand visa on arrival service nationwide to further encourage tourism alongside improving facilities. Islam Sid reports. In Algeria, the allure of diverse landscapes from the Mediterranean beaches to majestic mountains and white Sahara desert is captivating global attention. With a rich cultural heritage boasting Roman archaeological sites and attractive oases, the country stands as a prime destination. There is obviously great tourist potential. There is a real desire to welcome us, and the hospitality is always very warm. Recent governmental initiatives aimed at easing visa procedures and promoting tourism have sparked an unprecedented thrive in the industry. The ambitious goal is to welcome 12 million foreign tourists annually by 2030, while also fostering job opportunities for youth in the southern regions, where cities like Janet have experienced a notable increase and foreign tourists since 2021. Algeria's strategy aimed to attract 12 million tourists by 2030. To achieve this, we as the tourism sector and traditional industry seek to encourage investment, provide facilities for investors, construct tourist and hotel facilities, and rehabilitate and modernize hotels currently owned by this sector. The facilitation of visa on arrival at airports have contributed to the surge. Visitors to Algeria are treated to traditional Algerian folk performances, providing a glimpse into the rich cultural heritage of the country. Algeria's tourism surge is backed by improved infrastructure and diverse offerings, providing to visitor preferences and enhancing the country's appeal. Simultaneously, an international promotional campaign seeks to establish Algeria as one of the must-visit tourist destinations poised to shine in the global tourism landscape. Let's catch up on more stories making headlines around the globe with Sofian Kenturi in the News in Brief. The UN Security Council declared on Monday that South Korea will assume the rotating presidency for June, succeeding Mozambique. The current president will brief the press and outline the month's agenda, while South Korea will also brief UN member states on global challenges. Claudia Sheinbaum leads the preliminary vote count in Mexico's presidential election. According to the National Electoral Institute, Sheinbaum, a left-wing candidate, is reported to have secured around 58% of the vote, while her opponent, tech businesswoman Sushitel Galvez, received over 29%. On Monday, Spanish farmers staged a blockade on highway at the border between France and Spain. Just days ahead of the European Parliament elections, hundreds of farmers mobilized, driving their tractors onto the highway and converging at the border crossing. This action mirrors previous EU-wide protests earlier this year, protesting what farmers perceive as unjust EU agricultural regulations and unfair competition. The Algerian national football team persisted training at the Sidi Musa Technical Center, gearing up for upcoming matches against Eugenia and Uganda on the 6th and 10th of June, respectively. This match is slated to be held at the Nelson Mandela Stadium in Baraki, and Mandela in the Ugandan capital Kampala mark the third and fourth round of the 2026 World Cup qualifiers. Well, that's all for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to our channel. Till next time, take care.